Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Frank. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. We still need to talk rally cars. We haven't done that in a while, mm. uh, especially since Jim Connor 2020. Is that what they're calling it? Came out. I think it's just Jim Connor 2020. Did- Pastrana Connor. Yeah, yeah Pastrana's Pastrana. deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I actually just watched uh, Scotto's show on Smoking Tire, mm-hmm. and he, I, I love hearing the background information about how they are able to pull that stuff off or not pull off. Right. But like the 150 mile jump is amazing, but the dropping one whole tire and wheel off the dock and sliding it along, the, like basically that's a grind, right? Like he did a skateboard mm-hmm. grind with a yep. 862 horsepower rally car. Yep. Anyway. That stuff is nuts. I loved all of it. It's, it was cool. I liked it. Uh, we normally open the show talking about personal news and updates. Um, well, was, usually we talk about automotive industry, like the industry news. And there's, there's none. Two days, there's been none. No, there's none. <laughs> like, even if we took the last two weeks, there's none. Like True. I, I literally, other than like watching Camille try to melt snow with his LED headlights that are not working in, on <laughs> in boston right now that's the only industry thing i've seen lately yeah no there's just nothing else uh i did have a conversation with our friend uh robbie de graf the other day he was like hey man did you see Haggerty's bull market list for 2021 and I've, yep. of course i have four kids and so no i hadn't seen it <laughs> uh but my my inclination with robbie asking me about that was like the 80 series is on the list isn't it and he goes yes it is so I, I sold the Land Cruiser about four months too soon. If only we had known. Dollars. Dollars just floating away. But it's also speculation. It's 100% speculation. And to be honest, I'm very happy with where the Land Cruiser went. The guy has already had it out mm-hmm. numerous times. Uh, I completely forgot about California emission laws. So when he bought it for me, I didn't remember that I didn't have catalytic converters. Did he remember? He did. He, he was like, Hey, and he didn't seem offended by it either. He was like, Hey man, I'm just letting you know, I'm putting a new exhaust on it. I was like, Oh, okay. cool. Like, great. I, that's awesome. He was really cool about it. Uh, but I did go look at an actual travel trailer. I think it was a couple, three shows ago. I, Frank recently, I have been down rabbit hole after rabbit hole of looking at travel trailer websites. Cause they all had the floor plans in like 3d models. Yes. And so you can just spend so much time just like, oh, yeah, this one has the drop down bed and that dinette slides out. And right. That's where I'm going to store this and that's where I'm going to store it. Exactly. I was like, I can, I can fantasize I can, over it. See, you're thinking of things. I'm like, I can stash two kids there. I can stash another one over there. Like, I'm, like, well, I'm trying to hide the toy kids. box trailers. Uh, not so many of the toys. Toy box. That's the name uh, of the company is Toy Box. Well, it's the type of trailer, it's a yeah, camping like, trailer like you're describing. But then in the back, it's open like a garage. Yeah, I have. Okay. I did. Yeah, so those are the best. The reason I didn't spend a lot of time on those is because f- for me, with four kids, I need the double over double bunk beds. And every time I looked at a toy hauler version, they didn't seem to have those available. Uh, well, well, some of them. Uh, you know what's cool about the toy uh, version is that you can put all your toys in the back and SUV motorcycles, whatever the kids have. That's what I need. But oh some of them, once you unload, then they have bunk beds that kind of fold down. Fold out. I see that it looks, it, they fold to the side of the trailer walls, the same way the land cruiser seats fold. Yes. Oh man. Also, if you Google image, image search toy box trailer, apparently there was a movie called toy box and it doesn't look very good. So uh, just note that for future reference when searching the toy box. Oh, that's, that's not good. <laughs> it's not, uh, it's I'm not. not, I'm not going to search that. Um, but I actually, so I actually went and looked at a, I got to get it right. A, a forest river wildwood FSX. And then it's one seven, eight B H S K. That's just throwing letters and names and <laughs> stuff at a wall and hoping something sticks. It, it is not a very big trailer. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to like throw my images up here so I can share with you guys. Um, I didn't prep very well tonight. So uh, <laughs> overall length is only 22 feet and then the dinette slides out, um, which I, I was in it with it closed. And yes, the dinette definitely needs to slide out for us. Um, 
being that my 12 year old weighs 150 pounds and is like five, five, like he's, he's not a small human. Um, mm. I actually have a picture of it with the, the slide in. Um, and as you can kind of see, like, it's a pretty cramped space. Like you're not, you're not getting more than one person. Oh. oh, there's a, but the point is also kind of to just use it for sleeping. Like, yeah, absolutely. You're taking it somewhere. You're going to spend your time outside. There's a, there's a comedian who has a whole bit about, being in a fight with his wife. I think his name's Nate Bergazzi and they only have like one hallway in their house and it wasn't very big. So mm -hmm. like they're in the fight and they'd have to like pass each other sideways <laughs> in the hallway. It was very passive aggressive. All excuse me, excuse me. Exactly. <laughs> but she was not happy with him. So, um, but when you do slide it out, it gets way bigger. Um, that's, that's a, She's not, yeah, it makes me think of, um, uh, Step brothers, like there's so much room for activities. Like, <laughs> can so, we just become best friends? <laughs> exactly. So these are these are actually double over double bunk beds, and then there's a big storage space here. Mm. This is a, a bathroom mm. with a shower, sink, and a toilet. Um, you only get two burners on this one because it's not very big. And then the part I like is that the the bed that's in this image is actually a Murphy bed, and so then you get this other couch. I was like, oh, okay. So I don't. Interesting. That's kind of creative. I don't spend a lot of time sleeping anyway. Um, but this is the part that it always makes me think about because we talked about those Timbrin axleless uh, axles. Is that what they're called? Axleless axles. 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 Yeah, I think that's yeah, yeah. what they're called. Um, but I was like, oh, homie, like we're gonna we're gonna cut these, we're gonna cut those, and we're gonna just put do it onto that bar there. Um, I haven't got anybody from Timbrin to actually return an email Axel though, so. <laughs> Axelus axles is going to bug me. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know I don't the like that. correct phrase, but um, yeah, there's the bathroom. See, it's it's freaking usable. It's something. Why is there a red GTO flow? That's hot. I like that. Oh, you want to? <laughs> so uh, the other day I was picking up some lunch and this thing was uh, idling outside and it had a big lopy Ooh. cam on it. Is that so on it's, snows too? It's on, it's on winter tires. So yeah. I was like, I, I, he had it sitting there idling and I was like, that's an angry sounding car. And it was making tons of like, yeah, DOS condensation because he just turned it on. But I was like, wait a minute, are those, those aren't all trains. Those are snow tires. Yep. Good. This guy's good on them. I, I drove, I wanted one of those like forever. And I finally drove one and it was like the most pile of crap falling apart car and it ruined it for me. And We've talked so about sad. the one that I drove, right? Uh, it wasn't supercharged uh no it was oh called... no it was that horrible one-off oh, <laughs> yeah, so exactly never mind we have talked about it then so yeah, i drove a sorry. uh george barris modified one of those cards frank and it's horrible and my really old did. boss it's everything uh, you would think it would be yeah my old boss went to uh one of the auctions and as always happens at auctions the alcohol flows right so that way they people bid better uh and she purchased this car at auction for way too much money <laughs> and it's a steaming pile of horribleness i actually think a couple of these pictures on the image search are mine but we won't get into it it's really terrible it's orange you can look it up just type in george bear's gto for the audience it's it's yeah. bad so that's kind of the path I went down with the travel trailer. I really liked it. The only thing I come back to is like, I'm not gonna be able to throw it in the driveway, stupid mm -hmm. neighborhood HOA. I can't just leave a 22 foot trailer in the driveway. So there's some hidden costs to, to travel trailer ownership. Like you got to storage somewhere. Like yeah. you got to winterize it. You got to do all this stuff. Like it's like a land boat. That's kind of, yeah, it's, you don't get to go on the water with them. Yeah. But you um, could, <laughs> Uh, our friends at Bean Trailer <laughs> actually took their fiberglass shell and turned it and over floated and it, yeah. th floated it out on a lake with one of their marketing guys on top of it. Pretty killer. And it held. They, yep. They're not wrong. It was waterproof. <laughs> Technically true. So that's that's all the updates I have. Not Nothing too okay. major. Yeah, I between now and Tuesday, I got nothing. Oh. Um, it snowed. That's oh, all I, I have. I lied. I got to find this picture real fast. Higher. Well... I've already sent it to you and everyone else, which is why I um, forget to include it in show notes, but I'm on the okay. hunt for wheels. Oh yeah, this is good. Um, Sequoia. This is good. 
uh, man, I can't type with Tundra TRD wheels. So Frank, Chris was, he, to fill you in, he's got a white Sequoia and the running joke was that we, he was going to get some, uh, Land Cruiser heritage edition wheels to make the white Sequoia look like the Land Cruiser heritage edition because <laughs> they, to the untrained eye are very, they're similar very similar in, in size and shape and style. Yeah. And, and the Land and Cruiser Heritage Edition is everything. 90 grand. And my Sequoia is definitely not anywhere near <laughs> half of that even. Like we're even below a quarter of it. Like we're way down there. Um, so we've, we've been doing research on how do we get these bronze BBS wheels. Well, Toyota's very... Um, Protective. selective protective like they're they're like people spent 90 grand on these trucks like not all of you idiots can mm -hmm. take these wheels um so we had some other ways that we thought we might be able to work it around it but it was basically going to come out to be like three thousand dollars for a joke wow. <laughs> yeah yep yeah. good frank's on our page <laughs> like he's yeah. like no it was it was ridiculous so i was like all right i can find secondhand wheels somewhere so the sequoia and the tundra wheels match up that's literally the exact same bolt pattern, uh, offset, all that stuff. And so these are, they're Tundra TRD wheels, but they're not TRD pro wheels. Yep. Um, so I'm now on the hunt for a set of second hand, um, it's wheels. very interesting that though, that the Sequoia and Tundra are five lug and the forerunner <laughs> And the, six six. and the Tacos is six. <laughs> and the FJ Cruiser. And the F, well, yeah, FJ and four. Literally four FJ, runner, same thing. Yeah, Forerunner, FJ, and Tacoma all run the same six lug. And I don't know why. Very strange. No, I'm sure there's an explanation. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to find somebody who, what I, who what knows, I am who hoping, it to us. Yeah, what I am hoping for is when I go to do like brakes and rotors on this thing, that it is not like the Land Cruiser where the the rotor is set inside the hub like i hope it's like the rotor's outside the hub like a regular large suv is I think because they've kind of standardized that between 95 for 93 when the 80 came out in in 2008 yeah well <laughs> the the rotor inside the hub is the more reliable and strength or tough setup where the rotor outside the hub is like every other suv where they don't do it normally so mm -hmm. i'm hoping that's the case but those are the wheels that i'm trying to find now uh i've been able to track down a couple sets second hand but they were like give me 700 bucks and i was like hold on let's let's slow up here guys like yeah uh I'm there's a few sets here 700 bucks you get tires with them right and that's but then the, the one guy was like hey man i just want the wheels and he's like well it cost me 80 bucks to get the the tires cut off or dismounted mm -hmm. i was like you don't have a knife <laughs> are they that bad that they need to be knifed off and not salvaged like i just uh they were they were something i didn't want they were like, okay fair. but yeah they weren't super they didn't have a lot of tread life left anyway i was like well mm. oh, we're good yeah so that was my update that i did include in the update it looks factory i like it i, I think it looks pretty tough looking and i'm not even a i don't normally like black wheels on stuff i I do like the mantra of taking another wheel from the same manufacturer and putting it on a different vehicle. You know, yeah. like I'm hunting for the FJ wheels. They look <laughs> awesome on the Forerunner. Um, even within any, you know, any manufacturer, I just I, I like doing that. It keeps it in the family. It's always fun. So, Frank Ross bought my Forerunner. <laughs> I, I've been downsizing cars lately, so. Okay. okay. <laughs> Today I found out the two weak points. Weak point one are the tires in the snow. Weak point two is the traction and stability control, which is super primitive. And if you get any wheel spin whatsoever, it just completely cuts the throttle. So the pedal goes totally dead, even if you floor it. And the, then you have to release the pedal, count to two, and then it gives you power back, which is like, it makes sense if you're trying to avoid slip, but then it also like, if you're in an intersection and you're trying to accelerate, you, you, you're, you know, that's a crash. So yeah. fix that soon. Which that was my favorite part of the 80 series was because there was no traction control. You mm -hmm. could just, you could launch it as hard as you wanted. You were either mm -hmm. going to spin the tires or go. 
Yeah. That's what I did with the Miata today, getting it out of the snowbank. Shoveled like <laughs> just enough snow that it wouldn't take out the plastic on the bumper. And I was like, okay, traction control off and floored it. Yeah. It's good times. Yep. Okay. Any more snow updates? Is it still snowing or are you guys done? No, it finally stopped. Okay. It was, it snowed from like four o'clock yesterday until probably two o'clock today, maybe one o'clock. And it was like, 11 p.m. last night and it started sleeting and covered all the snow with ice it was like you could hear it on the window it was a horrible sound you hear that sound the first thing you think is this is gonna suck to clean off the cars <laughs> Just, when, I hear, when i hear that sound i'm yes. normally like is there a tornado nearby like but <laughs> like if, if things hit we've gotten more hard. tornadoes here than you recently <laughs> so <laughs> we had that discussion too recently yeah. <laughs> Ugh. Say Ross in Connecticut had more tornado warnings than me in Kansas City. We've had tornadoes on the ground every year for the last five years. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Apparently, I live in Kansas, Kansas, Connecticut. <laughs> oh, let's not ever say that again. No. No, no, no. <laughs> we don't have as good barbecue, so it's not the same. We just, uh, there was a. They did a charity challenge with the the latest Chiefs Broncos game where there was a barbecue place here in town. Obviously, there's a barbecue place here in town. There's a thousand of them, right? You don't say. <laughs> <laughs> but then there was a place out in like Denver that supposedly has like really good barbecue. And like whichever team won, the other city's barbecue place would pay for the food that each local barbecue place was feeding kids. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure kids in both cities got fed no matter what. And it was just more about who was paying for it. I'm hoping that's the way that went down. But like, as the conversation went, they kept talking about this great place out in Denver. It's St. Louis style barbecue. Nice. I was like, it's not even, I feel like you're just doing. Right. Right. It's like places in California doing like New York style bagels and pizza. Yeah. Well, it's not California. (laughs) It's like when I go to a restaurant and they give me a New York strip. I'm like, we're literally in Kansas City. We have a KC strip. I don't need a New York strip. Like, it's not as good here. <laughs> well, they cut it weird. Anyway, so let's talk about Frank. <laughs> yes. So, Our guest of the night. You have it as F- FED Motorsport. That's just you, Motorsport, right? Uh, yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, I... Um... I've been in the industry, in the off-road industry, for uh, 42 years now. This is my 42nd year. Nice. So um, I started, actually, with B.F. Goodrich. And I worked 10 years for B.F. Goodrich. And then um, I went out on my own and started my own little motorsport marketing company. Mm -hmm. And I did that for 10 years. Okay. And then um, Jackson motorsports marketing events um they weren't motorsports back then they were just marketing and some events and wanted to get into motorsports and had been approaching bf goodrich and michelin asking who did their motorsports and bf goodrich kind of pointed over towards me and said well frank does it right now so bottom line is i uh, actually shut my business down went to work for jackson um was there for the past 21 years. Um, And at the end of last year, they thought it was time for me to retire. Problem (laughs) is, I didn't think it was time for me. (laughs) They thought and you did, yeah. So it was like, uh, well, okay. Um, And uh, I said, well, I'll just go ahead and open up my shop again. You know, the difference this time between the last time I had my business open was, Last time I had several employees, up to 15 employees, and we were doing programs for a lot of different people and so Mm -hmm. forth. And You know, this time I decided I'm not going to have employees. I'm getting close to retirement. Rats. And that'll be, but sometime in the next few years. Retirement on your own terms. (laughs) Yeah. And I want to do it on my own terms. So I, um, you know, I I came home and, you know, started putting the word out that I was going to... uh, going to be doing my own deal again and um lo and behold jackson said well hey well if you're going to do that we'll keep you on board doing some consulting and um you're kind of pretty well known in the off-road industry so i'm sure we can continue to use you for baja and the mexico events and Mm. i kind of love baja anyways and so uh 
so I signed on for that. And, uh, and although this year, you know, with the pandemic, we haven't been that busy, um, but we did get the Baja 500 and Baja 1000 in, but, um, and then I hooked up with championship off-road racing, which was just mm -hmm. starting. I mean, I was looking for a challenge, um, and wanted to do just kind of project work. Um, and, uh, when the opportunity with, uh, championship off-road came about, I thought, you know, that might be a little more of a challenge than what I want, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we ended up putting a deal together and off we went. So, nice. uh, yeah. Cool. Very cool. And can you tell the listeners who aren't in the know what championship off-road is? Yeah, championship off-road racing is uh, off-road vehicles racing on a closed course. It's anywhere from a half mile to a mile and a half dirt track with lots of jumps, turns, um, several different classes from UTVs to two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive trucks. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the whole thing about closed course racing <clears throat> is that it's been around forever. Mm -hmm. It started in the Midwest. There was for quite a period of time, a Midwest series and then also a West Coast series. And over the last four or five years, it's been kind of, I'm gonna say falling off, losing interest. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of different sanctioning bodies have come and gone. It was, it was actually kind of on a little bit of a decline. And that was one of the reasons when uh, the folks from uh, ISOC that have the Snowcross series approached me about being the series director for Champ Off-Road, I was a little hesitant. I thought, you know, I don't want to do a rinse and repeat. I don't want to do mm -hmm. what we've been doing for the last four, five, 10 years. We need to uh, give it a facelift we need to make it different. We need to do some things that uh, bring it into the, the 21st, 22nd century. So mm -hmm. um, after a couple of months of talking with the management and them, um, I guess, buying into my ideas, some of which at times can be pretty far-fetched, um, but that's good because they kind of bring me back down to earth a little bit too, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, keep you in check. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I went ahead and I signed on with them and, um, and we actually uh, changed a couple little things this year, went out and wanted to make sure uh, the racers would love us at the end of the year, the tracks would love us at the end of the year. And then uh, COVID hit. Oh. And it was like, okay, I knew this was going to be more than I bargained for, but um, this isn't the challenge you were signed on for yeah, was, <laughs> or anybody did for that matter. You know, can you imagine trying to get new sponsors for a new series with no. COVID coming, you know, it's like, uh, with, not with limited task. fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, a lot of the sponsors we approached were like, you know what, um, it hasn't been real strong the last few years and you guys are new and I know you're saying the same thing everybody else is. You're going to take it to that next level. It's going to be good. You're going to do some amazing. And we believe all that, mm -hmm. but I think we're going to just sit back and take a little bit of a wait and see attitude and um, right. we'll support a couple racers. We'll check out what you guys are doing and, and uh, just kind of follow you this year. So okay. this year was, uh, you know, limited on sponsors. We did have a few that came on board and really helped us quite a bit. And uh, thank goodness for them. Um, but our goals were, again, to make the racers happy, uh, maybe get some OEM manufacturers back involved um, and build the interest um, and build our, uh, build our live feed. One of the things that everyone has focused in on so long for the last couple of years has been, uh, oh, you got to have television. You got to have television. Mm -hmm. Well, television is great if you're on at a good time. And a lot of people are not, these are some really good shots you got up, by the way. <laughs> I love yeah, the drone video. I, Chris is showing yeah. a drone footage of <laughs> like chasing immediately over the trucks as they race. Yeah. So let me tell you about that because this blew me away. Okay. Um, we wanted to focus on our live feed and we wanted it to be as good as television. Okay. 
and they've used drones for a lot of different things. You might see them out at a desert race or maybe even a rally event, mm -hmm. and they get, you know, the cars going by or whatever. Well, because we wanted our live feed to be so good, we decided we were going to hire a drone, but we weren't going to hire any drone pilot. And so what we did was we ended up hiring a drone pilot that is a professional drone racer. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, out, and like these shots you guys are looking at, I mean, they're amazing. I think there they are. Fly the drone right through one of those cabs if he wanted to. I, I'm actually a drone pilot and this guy is a thousand times better than I am. <laughs> He's getting the kind of view that you get when you play like an off-road racing video game, like that close yeah. just above chase shot. It, I feel like I'm playing Horizon right now and I'm just behind my vehicle the whole time. It's like the Madden yeah. view with the sky cam. Exactly. Like, like, There's not enough crashes for it to be me playing Horizon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, it's amazing what he does. I mean, he gets right down there beside him, right on top of him. Um, I mean, the... The footage and the uh, the views are phenomenal. Something that you know no one had ever seen before. Um, I was at the uh, went to the first race, was pretty busy, you know, and didn't pay much attention to what was going on with that because we had so many other things going on. And so I'm at the second race, and I I finally I'm paying attention a little bit, and I look at the drone, and I'm pretty amazed at it, and I'm like, okay, so where's our pilot? And they point back over by the spotter stand, and I turn around and I look. And I go, where? And they go, right there in the stand. I'm going, no, there's no one there but a kid. Yeah, that's our drone pilot. Amazing. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, he was probably 20, 21 years old, mm -hmm. but what a talent. Holy cow. Um, I think he mentioned to one of the TV production guys, hey, if you want, I think I could fly it in the windshield and out the back of the truck. We said, oh, uh, no, nah, we'll, we'll save that for later. Yeah, we'll save that for when we have an extra one on hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, if you don't prep the driver of the truck, it might give them a little bit of a start roll. <laughs> you yeah. it, boom, right there. So the, the live feeds have just been phenomenal. Our numbers have been phenomenal. And, you know, that, that's probably one, you know, it, it surprised a lot of people. We've gotten a great following. And uh, this year, going into 2021, we've got uh, sponsors that are now calling us. Instead of us calling them and begging them to get involved, they're calling us and going, hey, you know what? You guys did everything you said you were going to do. And it was actually pretty good. Good turn. Uh, so, uh, so I'm really looking forward to this year. We also <laughs> added another event. So we'll have 12 rounds of racing. Uh, oh, wow. And where are the races? Are what? Can you tell us what tracks and... Yes, th this year we'll go to Crandon, Wisconsin twice, the spring event, and then the fall. And the fall is kind of like the uh, the Super Bowl of, of close course racing, if you will. Um, and, and by the way, that track just uh, changed ownership. I don't know if you guys were aware or not, but um, it was always ran by a sportsman club. Mm. Um, and they ran it for 51 years. They got through wow. their 50th uh, a year ago. At their 50th, they had Kid Rock come out and entertain, which was, I was thinking it was maybe the, the wrong music for that crowd, but uh, he actually rocked the place pretty good. Yeah. It was uh, pretty awesome. So at any rate, um, Spring Crandon, Fall Crandon, which is on Labor Day, and then um, we'll be going back to ERX, which is up in Minnesota. Uh, Bark River, Michigan, which has been a Midwest race for I think 25 or 30 years also. Um, we go to Dirt City, which was a new event this year for the pro classes. And then um, we brought back Anago, Wisconsin. And Anago, Wisconsin, which will be the first event of the season, was on the schedule years and years ago. It's a fairgrounds in a little town up in Wisconsin. Uh, the people in that town though are rabid race fans. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wanted to expand, but we didn't want to go so far away that it would it'd be too expensive for the teams to travel. Um, I mean, eventually we'd like to have a wider footprint, you know, start looking at maybe Missouri, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. 
Texas, Georgia, who knows, maybe West Coast. But for this year, while everyone's still trying to uh, uh, keep their jobs and keep working and have the money, yeah. we didn't want to stress it for 2021. So Anago was a That's perfect fair. fit for us. Um, and uh, the racers were happy that we considered that when we added the event. And uh, I think the racing there will be fantastic. It's a little tighter, a little smaller track but lots of passing, lots of action. So oh, that sounds fun. Pretty good. Yeah. So we, we will start the first weekend in June. And I'm really excited about that now because, you know, COVID, I, I think we're going to have a little bit of a hangover from COVID going into. Yeah, unfortunately. And uh, so we'll start the first weekend in June um, and we will go until the first weekend in uh, September. Mm. And uh, okay. so 12 or six weekends in, uh, in 90 days. So oh, wow. It will, uh, should be a pretty good, uh, oh, okay. There's, uh, I believe that's Crandon. Well, no, it isn't. Anigo. That is, <laughs> that is Anigo, right? It looks tight, yeah. Yeah, there will be more track. There'll be some in the infield. Okay. You mm -hmm. can see a little bit of what's left over from, um, from Pat from years ago, and then it'll also jump out the back straight away. <laughs> That's wild. Plenty of dirt back there. All about it. So Russ yeah. is a quad guy, Frank. So you're in his wheelhouse yeah. side by side. This I, I true. can't hear Chris. What, what yeah, happened? Chris, your audio has dropped significantly over the last two seconds. Huh. What a bummer. Something weird is happening. How's that? Much better. Yeah. We're just going to go ahead and keep that little window open. <laughs> Does he have too much going on on his computer there? Or? Uh, well, Zoom decided to just manually adjust my mic volume without, oh. without uh, I guess, automatically do it. Without consent? <laughs> yeah. I did not consent to that. Wow. Thanks, Zoom. <laughs> Well, see, if that would have happened to me, I would have just blamed it on myself because I'm so electronic. <laughs> you do it okay. <laughs> Give yourself some credit. <laughs> so you're here. You haven't dropped off. We're, we, we've had shows before where halfway through, all of a sudden, our guest's internet was just like, no, you're not going to be on the show anymore. And they left. <laughs> we had yep. to restart it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. I lost track of where we were in the conversation there. Uh, we were taught you had transitioned to talking about quads. Ooh, yeah, it's like Ross likes quads. And side by side. So the side by side classes are. I know that there's. I saw that in the notes. There's 17 different classes that race. What are the different side by side classes? In 2020 or in 2021? Because oh, next what year. We did, okay. What we did was we actually added two classes. And let me, uh, let me try and explain. This year we had sportsmen. That's easy to understand. And then we had pro stock, which is for pro guys that, that are running stock type vehicles. Okay. We had pro modified, which means you can do a lot of stuff to make them go faster. <laughs> so we had a sportsman and two pro classes. Um, we actually also had a, what, what I'll call a 170 class. And it was for kids that were like, seven eight years old up mm -hmm. to about 12 years old okay and they're real small machines that kind of put around the track they put on a good show they're all equal um at any rate for 2021 what we did was we said you know they got that cool 170 class mm -hmm. and then you got a sportsman class but kids or teenagers can't get into the sportsman class until they're 16 years old so we start to have, do they have to have a, a street license or is it anything goes there? Um, no, they don't have to have a street license to get in to okay. the classes, but we're sitting there going, so wait a minute. Uh, there's, there's a class for the kids up to 12 and then it's like, take a break. You can't race from 12 to 16 years old. What's up with that? That's a lot of development. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. we can go with the class for them. Nice. And so we've got a UTV class that is a 570 class. Okay, Polaris 570? Yeah, so we have 170 for the younger kids, 570 for the kids up to 16 years old. And then um, 
that 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 by the way has been met with um, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of support from the parents. A lot of people are saying, "Hey, that's pretty cool. Um, mm-hmm. We want to keep our kids interested in something that's good, and and racing's good, albeit expensive. It's good." Um, and uh, so, at any rate, they're, they're, uh, that class is being well supported going into 2021. And okay. then um, our sportsman class was huge. And when I say huge, I'm saying we had 35 to 50 Whoa. sportsman racers on the track at one time. On a half mile track or a full, like, yeah, mile and a half track? This year, on all of them this year. And on a half mile, that's a bit much. So what we did was we said, okay, we got all these sportsmen that maybe don't want to step up to the pro stock mm-hmm. or pro modified. So we did a pro am um, for pro amateur, and yep. it's kind of that bridge between sportsmen and and pro. And uh, a UTV class also. It will be very much like the sportsman vehicles, only it will have uh, just a couple modifications. So going into 2021, then we'll have the, from top down, it'll be pro modified, pro stock, pro am, sportsman, and then the 570 and 170. Okay. That's a good spread. So yeah, it it really is a a pretty good spread. And, you know, there's so many of them out there. Uh, You know, earlier we were talking about, you guys were talking about uh, Chris looking for a trailer. Mm -hmm. Um, This year, if you go look at who's selling, who, whose business is up, it's the RV, the UTV, yeah. you know, sure. uh, oh, yeah. anything that gets you outside doing recreational stuff. Yep. yep you know, yep, yep. They just, their sales have exploded. So, uh, yeah. Can't go outside the country or anything. So people are spending money where they can here. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, I mean, we've, we've seen fads come and go. I think this outdoor movement is here to stay though. I think like if Chris buys this trailer and starts taking his family camping, I don't think in a year or two, he's going to say, okay, I'm done with the RV stuff. I'm, I'm going to go do something else. Usually right. people that do those kinds of things, they stick with it. Mm. So uh, that's it, why it'll my be wife's worried. See, but at least that, <laughs> What was that, Chris? So that's why my wife's worried about me buying a trailer. She's like, no, we are not traveling every weekend now. I don't see the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Easy what are you going to fill your trailer with, by the way? Uh, so I, I have that Sequoia right now, which is what I would pull it with, because I think it's rated to 9,100. Okay. Oh, shit, really? Yeah. Yeah. And the trailer Damn. I was looking at was 30... 500 so it would wouldn't have really noticed it was back there i'm sure we would have seen decrease in mileage and stuff like that but i i personally when i tow i like to stay way below the weight limits yeah well you know we talked earlier and i was talking about those toy boxes see if you bought a toy box rv then you could get one of these utvs to put in the back of it so when you went camping, now you had a uh, vehicle to truck around in. Frank's got the right idea. I like it. You're going to give me so much trouble, Frank. <laughs> 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 there, was, there was one, the, the, the floor plan that I like, but now, of course, now I can't find it on the site that I punched it in. That's uh, how it goes. Exactly. Forest River. And then when I got there, I went back to floor plan where'd they go but they yeah they had toy haulers of the ones that i liked i can't even find it now Mm -hmm. well definitely worth a look i agree there are so many of them what does i don't know if i hear a chainsaw in the background or something's making something's in the background interesting um, so Baja. <laughs> yeah, let's talk Baja. Yeah, you know, I was surprised that uh, you guys have never been. So we've got us. a really good opportunity for you. Okay. 
So I, have you ever heard of the BF Goodrich uh, pit support program? <laughs> so Interestingly, Matt, yes. <laughs> Matt is just regaling us with this. <laughs> Okay, well, this is a program that uh, actually I was uh, part of uh, putting this together and, and getting it started. And then there's been a lot of people that have added to it and so forth. But think about this for a moment. Um, you want to go race the Baja 500 or let's say the 1,000. Mm -hmm. We'll take the extreme, the Baja 1,000. Well, the Baja 1000 is, I don't know, 700 to maybe 900 miles. Um, and it's a big loop race in the uh, northern part of the Baja Peninsula. Right. But every third year, they do a peninsula run. It ends up being about 1,100 miles. And it starts up in Ensenada, and it goes all the way down to the bottom to La Paz. A couple times, it's went to Cabo. Mm -hmm. And... Back when B.F. Goodrich first got into off-road racing, um, they, they were kind of the first. And as they got moving along, a lot of other tire companies started jumping in also saying, well, we can do that. We can do that. <laughs> and so B.F. Goodrich wanted to separate themselves a little bit from the other tire companies. So what we did was we started doing this pit support program. And the deal was go buy B.F. Goodrich tires, and we'll provide free pit support. So imagine you're going down to the Baja 1000, the race, you're gonna have two crews that will do nothing but chase you along the race course and you know, give you spare parts or do whatever you need to keep your vehicle running. But then you need a bunch of other people stationed every 120, 140 miles out in the desert to, to actually dump fuel, change tires if you need it. Right, provide support. <laughs> Yeah. Do what you can't do after you've been getting the crappy net of you for, you know, a couple hundred miles. Exactly. Exactly. So we put this pit support program together and uh, next year just happens to be a peninsula run. Mm. So we will, uh, we'll probably end up with a pit every 120 to 140 miles mm -hmm. or a total of eight or nine pits. Um, that means there'll be eight or nine tractor trailers that are completely outfitted, kind of like a little shop, if you will, that goes down there. But here's the cool part, and here's the part where you guys fit in. Um, oh, I like that we're already on board. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have any qualifications, nothing that makes us anything, you know, valuable. Just, okay, here you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you'll see where I'm going with this, and I, and I, I think you'll uh, enjoy it. I'm sure you can fit in because – you know, we have to have thinkers and we have to have lifters. Mm -hmm. And so you, if you're not a very good Fair thinker, enough. you can probably lift. So uh. <laughs> uh, I got to write that down. <laughs> All right. Remind me to use that at work one day. <laughs> <laughs> so don't tell them I said that. <laughs> yeah. So we'll bring over 200 people down um, that are volunt Most of them, 85% are volunteers. Mm -hmm. And it's people that, you know, have a little bit of a passion for the sport, have heard about it, want to get down to Baja if they can. And what we tell everyone is, listen, you get to San Diego on your own, and then we'll take care of you from there. We'll pick you up in San Diego. Mm -hmm. You'll have transportation down to your pit location. We'll feed you. We'll house you. You'll be with a crew of about 20 people, um, and we'll get you back out. When is this? <laughs> and this, this is in November. But now at each pit that we have, understand, we do have to have, you know, the thinkers and, and some people that have some talent. So at each pit, we try to have, we'll have a pit boss that kind of leads the crew, if you will. And he's someone that's Baja savvy, been doing it for a while and so forth. But then we enlist someone that's a fabricator, mm -hmm. maybe a couple mechanics, uh, couple people that can lift 150 pound tires and change them. Um, a jack guy, fire mm -hmm. extinguishers, fuelers that can pick up fuel dump cans, just like they have at NASCAR yep. and dump fuel in these vehicles. Cause those aren't, those aren't heavy. Those are, no, th those aren't too bad. How many gallons are those things? There are 11 gallons and fuels eight and change eight and like a quarter. Yes. 
So <laughs> what's uh, okay? Yeah, just throwing ninety like pounds under your pounds, shoulder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and the, the interesting thing about it, you know, those guys that come in at NASCAR pit stops, you see them taking one or two cans, and out they go. Oh, it's like they're not even lit. It's crazy. Yeah. Some well, of those guys are so deceptively strong. Yes. Well, these trophy trucks that pull into the pits, some of them have uh, an 80 gallon tank. So like the trophy trucks have 80 gallon tanks. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, some of them may even have a little more than that. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. They have uh, they have a range of up to, you know, any more of the newer ones are all 180 to 220 mile range. And they normally are getting around three miles to the gallon. Yeah, so that, that oh, math adds up. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> an 80 gallon tank. We, we recently had a, on the show the, the guys who, who work at Long Range America and they make uh, replacement and auxiliary gas tanks to where people get up to that on their personal vehicles. But I can't imagine that amount of gas and only getting like three miles of the gallon. That's insane. Yeah, it really is. So at any rate, we'll have, we'll have guys that can fuel, uh, change tires, all the things you could think of. But then in addition to that, we run a, a pretty elaborate communication system. And it includes a satellite network, uh, mountaintop relays. And so mm -hmm. we actually track every vehicle that goes by our pit. And then we report it. Uh, through the satellite to a place, uh, well, to Jackson Motorsports in South Carolina, where mm -hmm. there's a small group of people that are- Right, the timing crew, yeah. Yep, and they're taking the times and plugging them into a computer and keeping track. It's unofficial, of course, but- Right. Is that, track. is it every vehicle or just the BFG supported vehicles? We keep track of every vehicle. Oh, shit, goes, wow. Yeah. Um, and that, that way we can let people know what position they're in past each pit location, you know, if they're in second, first, yeah, yeah, yeah. If they need to speed up, slow down or what have you. Um, excuse me. So we have our communications network and then um, another skilled trade that we need is we need someone that can cook. And uh, I'm so because, bad at that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm You're not. Of that, did you say? Oh, I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> when my wife and I were dating, I tried to surprise her one night and make like tacos, and I bought the wrong kind of meat. Like it was ah uh, <laughs> fired. So, yeah, I literally. She, I was relegated to the sidelines for that. She's like, "We'll either order out or I'll do it." I'm like, okay. Okay, Chris, I'm making a note of that just in case you do sign on. <laughs> I'm more on the lifter side, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, the other thing, uh, someone that's bilingual, we have a person that's bilingual in every pit, and that's what their job basically is to translate. Mm -hmm. uh, we also find volunteers that are EMTs. Oh, wow. Yeah. I guess that's uh, uh, kind of valuable out in the <laughs> presumable, presumable, forget I was trying to say anything. Yeah. Yeah. The middle of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and we do for our own folks, but also in case something was to happen in the area of our pits, we'd like sure. to be able to help people. So um, we have uh, we have an EMT um, that will come to each of the pits as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, let's see, I, I think that pretty much does it, but it ends up being about 20 people. And usually we stay at a hotel up until about a day or two before the race. Mm -hmm. And uh, a day or two before the race, we head off into our pit location and uh, set up and you're camping for a couple of days. So the, the cook is really important, Chris, because the cook is providing meals for those 20 people, exactly. breakfast, lunch, and dinner for two or three days. And so you, you have a very unhappy crew if we were to send someone like yourself to cook. Exactly. I would, I would never want to do that. Here's your, uh, here's your, it's not a meal. It's just a bowl of shit that I fucked up. <laughs> uh, you remember the, 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 the Top Gear episode where they were in Africa with station wagons and yes. Hammond ate beans literally for every meal. <laughs> like, it would, oh, beans or beans? Like, it would, <laughs> uh, well, you know, yeah. You know, what's funny is some of these guys that have been going down there for a while they like to get a pit location that's within 30 or 40 miles of the ocean 
because then they normally will barter. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what they're bartering, but they barter with the local fishermen. Okay. Okay. You have them bring lobster or fresh shrimp or fresh yep. fish over to the camp. And uh, so Sounds they good. they actually eat pretty good in the pits. That's not bad. That actually sounds kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, that works out pretty good. So, you know, you guys just need to think about this. And if you decide you're up for an adventure, and it's always an adventure. And, you know, out of all the people that have went down over the years and, and came back, you end up either loving it or hating it. <laughs> and the bad part about if you love it, it's like a really, really bad drug. You have to come back year after year after year. It's that car cane. It's just an offer. Where's the Baja? How do I get the Baja? <laughs> just, yeah. Get we, we have people yeah. that have volunteered for more than 30 years. Holy shit. So it's and, just and, a flight you know to San what? Diego then. What, what's that? It's just a flight to San Diego. That's all it costs. That, that's all it costs them. Wow. Some of them live uh, Southern Nevada, Arizona, mm -hmm. um, California, but um if you think about it for 30 years or 30 plus years, these individuals have taken vacation to be able to come mm -hmm. down and do this, volunteered their time, got their way to San yep. Diego to be able to go down and do this. And so we've got several that have been there quite a few years, 30 plus, we've got probably a couple handfuls of those. Wow. How many times have you been? 40, this this was my 42nd. Wow. That's... So I've been to every one. What got you into off-roading? <laughs> <laughs> Frank, what got you into off-roading? Well, a different kind of off-roading. Okay. Um, I'm a horse guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, uh, I have horses. I've had horses all my life. And uh, I actually sold a horse to a guy who then called me and a year later and wanted to sell it back to me. And I went to buy it back from him. And uh, he was a friend that I'd known off and on for a couple of years. And I was kind of looking for work. And he said, I said, what are you doing? Why are you selling the horse? He said, I'm moving to Colorado to work on a cattle ranch. I said, okay, well, what okay. have you been doing? He said, well, I've been driving for BF Goodrich. Driving what? Driving tractor trailer. Really? He goes, yeah, why? Okay. I said, well, I'm for a job. <laughs> and so that's how I hired off to be as good. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's so, pretty funny. Yeah. That was uh, 42 years ago. So, uh, <laughs> Oh wow. Yeah. And uh, in addition to, you know, going to Mexico for the, the pits and all the races and so on and so forth. Um, BF Goodrich also goes down ahead of time with the sanctioning body to help map the race course. Right, right. They're kind of like intricately involved in more ways than just providing tires and support, it seems. Yeah, exactly. So I've got to see, I, I do the mapping with uh, some other folks and uh, had been doing that for the last 42 years. So I mm -hmm. kind of know Baja pretty well. Um, you can and, say that. Uh, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I look forward to it every year. Seems pretty amazing. That yeah. Great. I mean, given we talk to a pretty select and niche group group of people from the off-road world, but nobody's ever said a bad thing about Baja. Uh, it, Matt had advice though. He had advice, but he didn't say don't go. Yeah. What was his advice? So I, I asked him the question like <laughs> what to avoid at all costs in Baja. Ma and he and he said tacos from anything on wheels. That's what I. That's what I was going to say. That's that is absolutely correct. You, you understand why, don't you? Because uh, yeah. if it's uh -huh. bad and makes you sick, that taco stand will be on a different corner tomorrow. Oh yeah, exactly. You can't go back and yell at anybody. Yep. Right. right. Or uh, yeah, no. Oh. Yeah, you know it used it's to be don't drink the water, but um, uh, that would probably still be number two after the taco stand with wheels. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but a lot of places now are getting better water and you might not get sick if you drank the water. How much water do you guys bring as a crew? Oh, uh, cases and cases. If you think about these meals that I was telling you about for the pit people yes. and there's 20, water. 20 people, 
we bring all the food and beverage and everything for all of them for each pit. Oh uh, my God. That's why it's so we go semis. shopping in uh, yeah. San Diego and uh, load up the semis. I, I want to be around that Walmart when eight BF Goodrich semis pull into the parking lot. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's how some people get recruited to go help. <laughs> That's exactly right. You know, it's pretty funny when uh, we actually split the guys up now, but it's pretty funny when one, one pit, you know, goes to a grocery store or a Sam's Club or a Walmart or whatever and does their shopping and they roll up to the checkout counter with four or five shopping carts that are just heaped full yep. of, uh, of stuff. Mm -hmm. My, so I used to teach middle school and uh, I was in the science department and every year we, as a department, we always knew what we would need for every experiment we were going to do throughout the year kind of thing. And we would do the same style thing. We would go to Walmart and we'd all divide up with our own lists. But by the end of the day, there'd be four shopping carts full of gelatin and sugar mm -hmm. and random crap that like we couldn't get out of the school supply stuff. Like we, it was, we always looked like a bunch of weirdos because none of us look related and our ages were all really different. So it looked like a bunch of homeless people with shopping carts being like, no, we're just gonna eat jello for a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very nutritious. <laughs> so Frank, Score's website has you listed as the grand marshal. Well, yeah, that was an honor that I got um, for this past Baja 1000. Yeah. Um, Congratulations. Well, thank you. It was, uh, it was truly an honor. And, you know, I've, I've done just about everything a person can do as it relates to a Baja race. And uh, that's probably the one thing I, I'd never thought of. And, the uh, grand marshal. <laughs> right. Yeah, as being a grand marshal, being asked to uh, be a grand marshal. So that was uh, that was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So yeah. uh, that's that's something not a lot of people can say. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Usually, you know, they save that for some big time celebrity or you know someone that's really trying to draw an attraction. Yeah, I mean, they do that like, at NASCAR all the time. Yeah. It's like, here's like this person who has no interest Andretti's in NASCAR. Been, yeah, Mario Andretti's been the grand marshal. You know, famous people like that. I, I think I got asked because, A, I've been around for a long, long time. Um, but number two, you know, this race was, uh, because of the pandemic, it was like no spectators at the start-finish line, no drivers meeting, no press conference, none of those things. So they were probably looking for someone that was going down anyways, that had to be there. And uh, that could probably kind of just, you know, fill in. And when you mention their name, some people might know it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's how I ended up getting uh, tapped. How did they do driver's meetings if there was no in-person driver's meeting? Was it just virtual? Everybody's got to log in on Zoom? Yeah, it was, it was virtual. And hmm. somehow I just lost you. I know it didn't touch my computer. No, you're still there. You're still you there. there. Yeah. yeah. We can still hear you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. I'll try to figure out how I, uh, how I get back to you. you can't see us anymore. We can see you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I uh, kind of just went blank. Well, if, you, if you're good just talking to a blank screen, we're still good. We can keep yeah. going. <laughs> okay. Very good. Very good. So what are your Baja tips? Do you have anything else? Well, you know, I, in reality, people should probably not go down without getting a little education. And there should probably be a checklist of things you need to have that you might not consider. Um, you know, there's a lot of people, for example, that would uh, maybe decide to take a little vacation that maybe they live in California, they take a vacation, and they're going to run down to Baja. Well, your insurance isn't good in Baja. You have mm -hmm. to purchase, you know, Mexican insurance. Hmm. Um, and if you have an accident or something happens and you don't have Mexican insurance, well, now you probably lost your car or truck right. or whatever right. you're in. And so, certainly your insurance policy. Yeah, yeah. So you really need to, um, 
you really need to talk to someone that's been down there, listen to them, let them give you tips. You know, the uh, taco stand on wheels is always a good one. The water is <laughs> good. Um, but uh, I'll tell you, the farther south you go down the peninsula, the less uh, populated it is, the fewer the gas stations, fewer the stores, fewer mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. So I would say that, uh, you know, if you're going down for very long, you need to, you probably want to go with someone that's been before or spend a lot of time educating yourself. Mm -hmm. It's not, it doesn't sound like the kind of place where you can just go on a whim. Like no. it sounds like even Moab, you can just go. And then if something goes wrong, there's rescue, you know, you'll, you'll get, get out, find a way out. But down in Moab, in, uh, in Baja, it sounds like there's a little more, uh, it's not even risk. It's just remoteness too. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Is remoteness a word? I don't know can be tonight tonight it will be so it, it is a word oh thanks okay yeah. i appreciate the uh <laughs> the, the research it correctly but it is a word <laughs> as long as the fact check checks out <laughs> hey i don't know what i did but i got you guys back and i can see you again. <laughs> <laughs> you've been here at all time <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're probably better off not looking at us so <laughs> We haven't had that comment yet. There hasn't been the Jesus, you two are ugly comment yet. Like, yeah. We'll go with I that. mean, chances are that would come from somebody like Glocker and we'd just say it back. So, yeah, with, with a couple of double birds to go with it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank Frank, you. Frank, you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> man. You're tired. My wife is now laughing at me because I <laughs> can't talk. So, Frank, thank you for joining us. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Well, I, I'll tell you guys, it's, uh, it's been a, a pleasure. It's been enjoyable and, uh, hopefully, um, you'll, you'll call me again sometime and, uh, we'll talk about something else. Or now that you guys have my contact info, you know, we'll start signing people up probably around, uh, probably around May for the November mm -hmm. trip to Baja. So keep well, that in mind. Gonna, oh, we will. I'm going to start. Start trying to put Easter eggs in my, my wife's mind about, hey, let's go to Mexico in November. She can hear you. Isn't she in the same room? <laughs> I think she walked out. Oh. A second ago. Uh, but I, I also am going to put some Easter eggs and be like, I need to go to the upper Midwest this summer. I want to yes. watch some close Ooh, wars action yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, I want to high five the guy that's flying those drones. <laughs> Dude, it's still well, a pandemic this summer. You're not going to be able to high five anybody. Oh, well, shit. hey, if you sure. guys five. get away, yeah, if you can get away to come to a uh, Champ Off Road race, let me know, man. I'll hook you up, and uh, I think you guys will be pretty amazed at what you see. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, sounds I, good. I've I've done I've been a course marshal for uh, rallying the Hundred Acre Woods before. So I've oh, okay. Rally, I've watched rally cars go by pretty close, but like close course off road to me looks drastically different because rally cars are never bumping off each other while they're trying to corner. Right. But rally cars, lots of times, uh, at least in the old days, I know when we used to attend rallies, you got to see them flying by you at amazing speeds, but it was usually dark also. It was like all lit up as they were coming and yeah. boom, they were gone by you and that was it. And you're right back in the dark. You're like, wait, what yeah. is that? Like, like, did lightning hit? What was... It's like something from Close Encounters. Oh, it's midnight again. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, we will definitely, um, we'll be in touch more. So, uh, so Champ Off-Road is at Champ Off-Road on Instagram. Um, obviously, BF Goodrich, just BF Goodrich. You guys could, you know, we don't need to tag them. No, uh, people know who they are. Yeah. Uh, I asked last time, rate and review us on iTunes for the listeners or the people watching on YouTube. Uh, we're, we're picking up more subscribers. We're kind of building some head, head steam. Head, head steam? Headway. Building head, steam. Head yeah. Steam. I'm no, what you meant. struggling tonight. Good thing I'm not the guest. Been a week. <laughs> uh, you can you can read what we write on uh, Hooniverse. Uh, that's the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. Um, it's still the December to remember Saturday Night Live uh, commercial is my favorite post I've written in a while because yes. that, there's a much bigger issue we need to talk about with those automotive <laughs> holiday commercials. Uh, in this house, we do celebrate Toyota Thon, not Happy Honda Day. So screw you if it's the other way around. Same. 
Uh, <laughs> you can follow Ross at no, not like the one from friends on Instagram. He doesn't do anything on social media lately and he's uh, better mentally for it. Yes. Uh, and I am at no, oh, no, I am <laughs> <laughs> struggle bus tonight. Yeah, seriously. We normally have like an hour and 20 minutes before we start these. We went, we went early tonight because well, this is East coast and we could do that. Yep. Um, I'm at overlanding dad. Whew. That was it. Got it. Well done. <laughs> That's the end of the show. That's it. Frank, thank you again. It's been a pleasure. Okay, well, thank you, guys. Uh, well, I will uh, look forward to hearing from you later on this uh, this year, um, either for a champ race or Baja. Yeah, I'll, I'll make okay. sure Absolutely. updated. Absolutely.